Hello everybody, back for more Allies by Alan Gratz. Thank you to Scholastic Publishing for allowing us to do these videos while we're on this uh, quarantine. Uh, the chapter I'm going to be reading today is entitled A Change of Plans. We are following the saga of James and his friend Sam. James and Sam weren't jogging, but they weren't walking either. They found a pace somewhere in between. They had a lot of ground to cover, and they were already late to the party, but they were both wary of running into German soldiers on the way. They had to stay on their guard. Henry told me his father was taken away by the Nazis, Sam whispered, to work as slave labor in Germany. His mother ran away before they could do the same to her. You got all that in five minutes we talked to them? James whispered back. Well... The De Compiègne shadows are very nice people caught in a very difficult situation, Sam said. Yeah, I know the feeling, said James. They trotted in silence for a few more yards before James said, I know why they're here, or I know why I'm here, Sam. Yeah, you volunteered. Yeah, but you did too. Why? Why are you here? I told you on the plane. I thought you were joking. James, I'm Cree. Sam said, I can't even vote in Canada, not if I want to keep my tribal status. In the army, I get to still be Cree and have respect. The question you need to answer is, why are you really here? James sighed, because I'm an idiot. A human whistle cut through their conversation and both soldiers instinctively dropped face first to the ground, their Bren guns thrust out in front of them. James held his breath and opened his, opened his senses, trying to see and hear as far as he could in the night. Sam was just as silent beside him. James's heart thundered in his chest. Someone in the darkness whispered a Canadian code word, and James relaxed. Sam gave the coded reply, and three shadows rose from hiding a few yards away. They were all privates from the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion. Two of them were white and one of them was black. That was something new. The Canadian army had been segregated in the last war, but it wasn't now. James had seen a number of black soldiers at basic training in England. The two groups briefly introduced themselves. One of the new guys was from British Columbia, and the other two were from back east, Ottawa and Hamilton. The black soldier's uniform was drenched, like he'd landed in one of the flooded fields, and one of the white soldiers had his right arm wrapped up with a bandage. The other white soldier had lots of little cuts all over his face and hands, like his parachute had dragged him kicking and screaming through one of the hedgerows that lined the fields and roads of Normandy. Two of them were privates from B Company, and one was a private from C Company. James and Sam were from A Company. Only the C Company soldier was in the right drop zone, and all of them were well away from where they needed to be. All their missions were to the north, so they decided to stay together until they could re each rejoin their companies. They had just set off when James heard a sound unlike any other he'd ever heard in real life before. It was like the sound of a falling piano made in a cartoon, and it was getting closer and closer and Pa-poom! A bomb exploded just a few dozen yards away, knocking them all down and showering them with rocks and dirt. Pa-poom! 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 The bombs fell like rain and they kept falling. The soldiers scrambled for cover, but there wasn't much of anywhere to hide. James and Sam dragged themselves to the base of one of the hedgerows. Bombs pounded the field all around them. James felt the vibration of each blast in the pit of his stomach and the bottom of his teeth. The Krauts found us, James screamed. Sam shook his head and pointed at the sky where the familiar shadows of British Lancaster bombers flew overhead. James watched in horror as they dropped their entire payloads of bombs right on top of them. He couldn't believe it. Their own allies were dropping bombs on them. They were supposed to be hitting German strongholds. The ground troops weren't attacking. This was a registered paratrooper drop zone. They must have gone off course in all the clouds, Sam said. Yeah, or they chickened out and they're dropping their bombs early so they can get out of here, James yelled back. 
Papoom, 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 papoom. The bombing went on for more minutes than James could count. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. The heavy pounding stopped, but the explosions still rang in his ears. Our own planes, the white soldier from British Columbia yelled, our own darn planes were trying to kill us. First they drop us in the wrong place, then they bomb us, James howled. The white soldier from C Company still lay on the ground, and at first they worried he was dead. But he wasn't injured at all. He was just crying, and he wouldn't get up for a long time afterward. They were all rattled by the bombing. The black soldier walked aimlessly around the cratered clearing just to do something with his shaking body. What are we doing here, Sam? James asked again. Seriously, what? Sam was so unnerved by the bombing, he didn't even give James a funny answer. He must have been asking himself the same thing. I hope Henry and his grandmother weren't hit, James or Sam said quietly. James hoped so too. Come on, said James, let's get this nightmare over with. They gathered their wits about them and set off to the north again. James glanced at the sky, wondering if and when their own allies would bomb them again, and he caught the others doing it too. About 30 minutes had passed when they ran into another 15 Canadian paratroopers, led by Major McLeod from C Company. McLeod was a tall, thin Nova Scotian with a brown mustache that looked a lot like horse hairbrush. He wasn't from James's company, but he was now the ranking officer in the group. I was supposed to have a heavily armed force of more than a hundred men with machine gunners, heavy mortars, Bangalore torpedoes, the lot, McLeod declared. He certainly didn't have that now. James counted 20 men with nothing more than three machine guns, eight Bren guns, a few pistols, and one Piat. We'll have it. We'll have to do said McLeod. We have a mission. Destroy the enemy radio station at Veraville, capture or destroy the enemy headquarters there, and blow the bridge over the Devet River. He paused and looked around, and that's just what we're going to do. James shot a disbelieving look at Sam. Do all that with just 20 men? The major was nutters. But sir, we're not with Charlie Company. Sam said. You boys from other companies are too far away from your objectives to make it in time, McLeod told them. We're near Veraville. With your help, we have just enough men to give it a go. Listen, he told the whole group. We don't fulfill our objectives, and all those boys coming off the boats in a few hours are going to have more fight than they can handle. We're here to do a job, and by God, we're going to do it. And just like that, James and Sam were off to attack the Nazis at Veraville. And that is the end of that chapter. Now, guys, we need you to continue to subscribe to our YouTube channels, get all your homework done for all your classes, and answer the question that I put in there today for this chapter. Uh, when we read again tomorrow, we are going to be reading Goldilocks and the two Canadians.